The goal of gauss jordan elimination is to make this matrix into diagonal form, which is ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So we start by taking the upper left number, the 1, and using it to get rid of the numbers below it, the 3 and the negative 1. The first step is to take row 2 and subtract 3 times row 1, because if I do that, it'll make the 3 disappear. So my first row doesn't change, 1, 1, 1, 7. My second row becomes 0, because 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0. Negative 1 minus 3 times 1 is negative 4. And 1 minus 3 times 1 is negative 2. 21 minus 3 times 7, 21 minus 21, is 0. So my second row becomes this. To eliminate the negative 1 in the last row, I'm going to take row 3 and add to it row 1, because minus 1 plus 1 will give me 0. So when I do that, my row becomes 0. That's why I chose the action I did. 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 plus 7 is 9. And so after my first set of actions, I was able to get rid of everything except for the 1 in the first column. And that's good. That's the first step. The next step will be to take the second column and make it so that there's a 1 in the middle position and a 0 above it and a 0 below it. This will be easiest to do if that negative 4 there is actually a 1. And so I'm going to take my second row and multiply by negative a quarter, negative 1 fourth. That'll change a minus 4 into a 1. It'll change the other numbers in the row as well, but it'll give me something that I can use to eliminate the numbers above and below it. So my first row is still 1, 1, 1, 7. My second row becomes 0, 1, 1 half. Negative 2 over negative 4 is positive 1 half and then 0, 3, 3, 9. Now that this number is a 1, I can use it to get rid of the numbers above and below it quite easily. I can figure out what action to take fairly easily from that. So I use this 1 to get rid of the 1 and the 3. And to get rid of the 1 above it, I'm going to use row 1 minus row 2 and replace row 1 by that. I use 3 minus 3 3 times row 2 to get rid of the 3 as well. And hopefully at this point you're starting to see a pattern in how these numbers actually get eliminated. If I do both these actions, my top row becomes 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus a half is a half, and 7 minus 0 is 7. The middle row stays the same, and the last row becomes 0, 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0, 3 minus 3 halves is 6 halves minus 3 halves, so it's 3 halves, and then 9 minus 0 is still 0. And so after this next set of actions, I end up with exactly this. A zero, zero is except for the 1 in the upper left corner, and my second column is 0, 1, 0, which is what I want for diagonal form. Next step is to use this number here, the 3 halves, and get rid of the things above it. And that'll again be easiest if this is a 1. So I multiply row 3 by 2 thirds the reciprocal of 3 halves, and change it into a 1. If I do that, my first two rows remain unchanged, and then the last row is going to become 0, 0, 1, and then 9 times 2 thirds is 18 thirds, or 6. Now that this number is a 1, I can use it to get rid of the numbers above it by multiplying row 3 by a half and subtracting it from rows 2 and row 1. So row 2 minus a half times row 3, and then row 1 minus a half times row 3. So I perform these actions. My last row is going to remain unchanged. My first row becomes 0, 1, 0, sorry, 1, 0, 0, and then 7 minus a half of 6 is 7 minus 3 or 4. This one becomes 0, 1, 0, and then 0 minus a half of 6 is negative 3, and the last one remains unchanged, 0, 0, 1, 6. Now that it's in diagonal form, I can just read off the solution to the system of equations that I had in the last video. From the first row, we see that x has to equal 4. From the second row, we see that y has to equal negative 3. 
and from the last row we see that z has to equal 6. You can check these in all the original equations and these three numbers will satisfy all three of the equations.